Welcome to Tokyo Station. This is the Marunouchi side of Tokyo Station and I came to this exact spot which is right next to the uh, Tokyo uh, Post Office. This is where I deliver most of the postcards every month for the Patreon Club, Postcard Club. This view is kind of significant because in 2027, and you can already see like the, the cranes there, right? It's going to change and you're going to have Japan's tallest building in this exact spot. Do you see the picture there? That in front of us right now in the picture is the torch tower. It's not there now. Do you see it? But it will be. This is a mock-up done by Mitsubishi Developments who is going to be uh, constructing this. And we're going to walk over from this point over there and take a look at the construction to see what this area is like now. And this will be used in historical references to see what the history used to be like, what this area used to be like. So uh, I'm going to be sharing some information with you about the Torch Tower. Uh, this was announced just about uh, four days ago. And it's it's going to radically change the landscape because uh, it's, you don't, you have no idea how, look at that building right there. Do you see the one that's uh, right in front of the Torch Tower? That's a pretty tall building over there, right? Now the Torch Tower is going to be 390 meters dwarfing all the other tall buildings in Japan. Right now, uh, the Haruka's building in Osaka, that is the tallest building in Japan at 300 meters, all right? Uh, before that, there was the Yokohama Landmark Tower. Landmark Tower was the tallest building for quite a long time. That's 296.3 meters, I believe. And that, you can see that building from so far away. And we're going to be now walking over and t checking out how the dynamics of the city is going to change and keeping that building as your landmark, okay, as we walk over. Who's building it? Mitsubishi is building it. Right there. Behind this building, right here, is going to stand in the sky, Tokyo Torch. So let's go over there right now and check it out. We can make this light. This is the Marunouchi side of Tokyo Tower, uh, sorry, Tokyo Station, a historical site because of the red bricks, which is kind of unique for Tokyo. I've brought you here many times in the past. I believe it was constructed around 1912, 1913, somewhere in that era. Built in the style of Amsterdam's Central Station. And I think the Japanese railways, uh, Japan Rail took a lot of um, notes from uh, Euro European railways, especially in Holland, because Japan and the Dutch have always had a pretty unique relationship. Now, the Torch Tower is on the north side of Tokyo Station. This is the Marunouchi south side. So let's get over to the north side. And on the way, I'm going to share some photos and some information about this torch tower. And I'm so excited when you, when you hear about the city that you've lived in for so long, evolving, changing. That's exciting stuff. <laughs> now the construction won't start until next year, which is gonna be interesting because we're gonna get a chance to see what it looks like before it turns into something incredible, made for people and it's, the design of the building seems to be highly influenced by the pandemic, meaning there's a lot more open space and higher ceilings that make it less possible for pandemics, viruses, any kind of infection to spread. They put a lot of thought into this and they might have even changed the plans as a result of it. But in the next few years, it would be really cool to talk with the designers, maybe get an idea of what that building, which is gonna be sprawling out of the sky from this spot. There's a big blank spot there, which is just a blank canvas for what we call the skyline of Tokyo. Hey, Hikatayama's in the house. Take it easy on your bum leg. <laughs> yeah, a little exercise won't hurt. It doesn't hurt at all. The swelling has gone down significantly. I spent 48 hours um, off my leg. A little exercise and a little sun will do some good. This is the countdown to the 2020 Olympic Games. 305 days to go. It's kind of exciting to see that too. 
there's been so much uncertainty with the Olympic Games that oh they oh they, they, it's weird it says 337 days on this side so what is the correct oh this is the Paralympic Games okay that makes sense so 337 days to the Paralympic Games and so that clock has been reset and and set many many times and to be honest with you it's been that clock has been a disaster there were times where it said like like 1,000 days there's been times so when I saw the two different dates uh, two different times I got extremely confused because it's been so inconsistent here is the Maranouchi North entrance this is where um, we would consider this is the north side of Tokyo Station and both of these two towers on the Maranouchi side are, are pretty significant in themselves let's go take a quick look enter in and exit out because as you can see here on the roof is beautiful in here and they put a net in between here you can't really see it too well but the net is to keep the pigeons from doo-dooing up there because there was a pigeon problem back in the day it is a very uh, beautiful historic side of the city of Tokyo all right let's move on out here If you do have a Japan Rail Pass, this is where you would get it validated, as well as, I guess, buy one or pick one up. It says here on the corner, Japan Rail Pass. So it's the north, ex ex north exit of Tokyo Station. Don't do any pigeon sounds. Who said that? Now the go-to travel campaign has started. And again, there's that building that I showed you before. It's really, really tall. You have no idea how small this is going to be compared to the new building here. Do you see it? It's crazy to think, to think how, tall, how, how different this is going to be. walking over to that spot now so can go and check it out So on this side of the station, there's not a lot of people. It's okay to uh, remove your mask a little bit and talk. All right, this side of Tokyo Station, I've, I've lost my notes. They fell off in my bicycle, I believe. But I, I think I remember most of it. This is the Tokiwa entrance to Edo Castle back in the 15th century before the castle burned down. Tokiwa Bashi, uh, or Tokiwa Bridge, on this side. That's where this is all going to be built. So technically, it's like Nihonbashi, Tokiwabashi, that area. So we're going to get a chance to take a look. And I want, to, I want you to picture this back in the 16th century, 15th century, when Edo Castle was here. It's completely different than what you see today, a modern Tokyo and an ancient Tokyo. It all kind of comes together on this spot here. And when we get to this intersection here, if we look to the left, you're going to get a, a view in the distance of the Imperial Palace, which is pretty much where the site of the uh, Edo Castle used to be, built in the same area. This side is called uh, also Otemachi, and there's a lot of uh, buildings, office buildings, which has brought me to another point here. This 67 story, 63 story building called Torch Tower. A lot of people have been scratching their heads and wondering, does Tokyo need more office space? And with this pandemic and the uncertainty, people might be moving outside of the city. There are some questions. And I believe the Mitsubishi development uh, CEO who 
Mitsubishi is the one developing this, part of the group, said that they're not sure what the demand's going to be following the pandemic, but the project is planned to go on. So instead of having 100 stories, they have 63 stories. They just make more um, locations for uh, public, uh, a larger observation deck, which is set to be at 350 meters high. All right, here's the intersection. I can't quite get there, but if you look straight at the end of the street, you'll see all those trees. That's the Imperial Palace where the Emperor lives, and that would be about where Edo Castle is. And right over there is Tokiwabashi, which is the ancient gate, one of, one of the ancient gates to Edo Castle. It is crazy to think that the observation deck of this new torch tower is going to be taller than Tokyo, uh, Tokyo Tower. So Torch Tower's observation deck is taller than the entire Tokyo Tower by like 20 meters, okay? It's crazy to think about that. The building itself is, is uh, 390 meters. And as I said, this is called Tokiwa Gate right there from the old Edo Castle. This building here will be completed next year. This is uh, also, I think this is called like the to Tokiwa building. Oh, and this building's gonna be demolished. I think it's already been deserted. Do you see this one right in front of you? The uh, Asa Asahi Insurance Building. I think that's what it says, something like that. This is gonna be demolished and this is going to be uh, a big construction zone. It looks like that this building has already been cleared out pretty much. All right, we'll go across the street. Um, let's go around this Pasona building. I believe this was owned by Pasona over here, which is a staffing company, I believe, like a competitor to another company called Recruit. Perhaps Pasona will be moving into this building, but this is the Tokiwa building. And this building was pretty unique um, because before they started the construction of this really massive building, and I, I believe this is like going to be 190 meters high or something, almost 200 meters high. This was famous for being a building about this high, and it had all these plants around it. It was really a striking looking building. And I remember when they, they uh, tore it down, they put this building up pretty quickly. Very sleek looking office building, and some of the offices look like they're they could be in use already, but it's it's uh, slated to be open next year. Now, looking down here, you can see this is the Pasona building behind it. This is all going to be demolished. It is an old looking building. Looks like definitely a Showa era with the smaller windows and the tile construction there. Nothing wrong with that. But there's going to be a massive courtyard Oh, there's some pictures over there. This is good. We can go check it out in between there. There's going to be a massive courtyard between the two buildings, they said. A uh, place where people can go. Now, the Torch Tower... <laughs> it's so cool. The Torch Tower is going to be... This is Now, we're now behind that building. Do you remember that building that didn't look so high? That's the building. The Torch Tower looks like it's 66% it's, um, taller than this one. All right? I don't even have no idea what it's going to look like in the sky. I'm, I'm going to hurt my neck looking up at it. It's, that's so insane. From where we started at the Tokyo uh, post office, the main post office, it doesn't look as tall. That's a good starting point for this. But when you get right here on the spot and you use that building as an indicator, wow. All right, let me get to the other side and I want to show you the picture again. We're going to line this up here. Now, T Torch Tower was in the news about four days ago when they announced it. We're going to take a look at, at uh, some of the pictures here. 63 floors, I believe, which 390 meters or what is that in feet? 1,200 feet about. It's pretty significant. Uh, okay, here's where we started. That was the exact scene here. Do you, look, do you remember this building right there? Okay, that building is, is this one right? This building is this one right here. And it, it's pretty tall. <laughs> that's, 
that's this building right here. It's pretty tall. So when you think about it, I can't imagine how much taller this is. It's like more than twice as tall. Yeah, my neck is gonna hurt from, the, from looking at that too. It won't be until 2027. So here's a timeline of step zero. That started in 2016 when they planned this project. Uh, I think they've been talking about this for a long time. I remember some buzz about a redevelopment program, but since 2002, Tokyo's had an urban redevelopment program going on. I think this is a part of it. 2021 in June, the construction starts on the Torch Tower. And you can see they start tearing down that, that construction and, and pre pre prepping it prepping it in 2022 um, they start putting in the underground uh, pipes the water pipes and all this for the building and then it'll be completed in 2027 and that's what it'll look like over there that's massive wow all right we're gonna get a chance to take a look at some of the other areas here with these pictures I'm really excited now I'm glad I came here today wow Suzette S is here. Thank you for being you. Thank you, Suzette. WRX Turbo and Marty Dittmer. Well, I hope we're allowed back by the time the Torch Tower opens. I think it will. Marty. One of the things that they promoted in the literature about this is that you will have an amazing view from this building of Tokyo Tower. And I think it's going to stay like that because I don't think another building can, can be taller than it in its way. And on the top of it, they are intending to make a park on the top of the building. It looks pretty amazing. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I know a lot of you couldn't be here, so you can't go and see, especially um, people that are buffs of, of new construction. Here, here's what the courtyard's gonna look like, but I wanted to show you what the observation deck is gonna be like. I think that's Mount Fuji in the distance there, but it's this is indoors, or I don't know, is that the sky? But this is gonna be the top of the torch tower right there. And it looks like a park where people can just chillax and, and look at the city from 350 meters up. Is that not the coolest thing? I guess I guess this is the uh, rendition of this, kind of the, well, that looks really nice. I love seeing the city of Tokyo evolve. So this is gonna be the courtyard between the two buildings. This building here, the darker one, is this one right above. You see that? In between is gonna be a courtyard. I forget how many, I think it was like 10,000 square meters or something. It was a pretty significant amount uh, of space. There's going to be, looks like shops on the uh, in this new building over here, which will be open first, of course. Uh, it's made by Mitsubishi Jisho Sek Sek Seke Inc. So it's a branch of Mitsubishi, the group. And uh, you can see the Torch Tower Shopping Center, which looks very futuristic, doesn't it? Very uh, next decade looking with the design. A lot of trees, which seems to be the trend in Tokyo. You can see that with the Olympic Stadium had a lot of trees, very natural wooden look to it. You can see that um, represented in, in the building, in, in the design of this building as well. Beautiful. It looks like rugby's being represented right there. Loads and loads of space um, for the courtyard. Beautiful, isn't it? Outdoors, cafes, life uh, post-pandemic, perhaps. And you can see Nihonbashi in the distance. This is interesting. This, all right, this is the most interesting part of that, this whole design. This is Nihonbashi. Do you know what I don't see? And it could be just because this building is blocking it. We're not sure. What I don't see is the highway going over Nihonbashi anymore. This is breaking news. I don't see the highway going over Nihonbashi. That's pretty significant because uh, during the 1963 Olympics, they constructed the highway around the city of Tokyo so quickly. Uh, in order to do it, they used the canals and the rivers. They dried up some of the rivers to make the highway. And it looks like a part of the redevelopment of this area, they're now putting the highway underground. 
or they're redirecting it maybe. So it, I don't see it in this picture, do you? To me, that's significant. That's significant. That means they're going to be beautifying Nihonbashi, which in the woodblock ukiyo-e woodblock print is represented so well with Mount Fuji being seen in the background. So we're going to bring the view of Mount Fuji again to this area. That's awesome. I'm pretty stoked about it. There you can see Tokyo Station represented in the gold right there and how close it is just across the street we walked here. There's Tokyo Station's Nihonbashi entrance right there where the buses are. Well, it was like we're in a wind tunnel. Hold on a second. So we're gonna be able to get nice views of Mount Fuji, it says here in the spring. I like how they're psyching us up for this with views of Fujisan, right? Fuji in the autumn and Fuji in the winter. But we're gonna have to wait for all of this because right now this building's in the way. This is the uh, old Pasona building. It's gonna be demolished soon. And I've, I've been making videos about buildings that are, are leaving us here in Tokyo because of the pandemic. This one is just because of urban planning, I guess. So we're gonna be saying goodbye to the old Pasona building. A lot of people work in there. I guess they're gonna find a new place to move. All right, before we go and walk around this area quickly, I want to show you the torch tower at night. Again, this is the view that we started from. Do you remember at the Tokyo post office? And that's what it's going to look like. Wow. Wow. It's so tall. It's hard to see the perspective, how tall this is, how much of the sky it'll be covering from this picture, but where we're standing here, it's double, it's more than double the height of this building, which is right there. It's double the height of this building. That's crazy to me. Yeah, I don't know how the flying cars are gonna get around this. It's so tall. So that, there you have it. And up here, I believe that this is the observation deck. This is that amazing looking park that I showed you before. Look at that. That's so beautiful up there, isn't it? Wow, I cannot wait to be sitting up there. I don't know how the shape of this, what's gonna be on the other side when in, inside this, I guess nothing. How does this work? Now, according to the designs, there's also going to be a 100 room hotel as part of the torch tower. So there's a hotel inside of there and that's just right next to the uh, uh, Mandarin, the Oriental uh, Mandarin Hotel and a bunch of other luxury hotels. So this area is very famous for that. Probably a helipad. There's a lot of them in Tokyo. And we're saying goodbye to this building, which is the uh, Pasona building. Um, I bet you they start tearing it down pretty soon. Especially with the construction of the Tokiwa Bashi building, the Tokiwa building right, right above me. This building is, will be completed in 2021. And then you're going to see a lot of new shops and the news of the unveiling in this building probably starting in 2021. You're going to see such an evolution in Tokyo Station. I'm excited because I live in this area. Pretty exciting. Oh, there's some more pictures over there. It's oh, awesome getting excited for, for something new coming here. The Olympics are going to be here next year and then they're going to be gone. And then what do we have to look forward to? A massive koi pond. Yes. There is a massive koi pond. Do you see that? Oh man. How can I move out of Tokyo now? This is like confirming all the rumors that they do intend to get rid of the highway near Nihonbashi. They're really opening it up. This is confirming a lot of the things that I thought that they've, they've been talking about since, I don't know, for the last 15, 20 years to beautify Nihonbashi. Look at that koi pond. That could be you. I had a friend who used to uh, hack and spit in there and the koi would eat it and that was really disgusting. 
Why did it just tell you that? I don't know. I just couldn't believe they ate it. I couldn't believe he did that. It's crazy. No, that was not me. Who's... That was not me. It wasn't Peter. Somebody else. Patio 87 does that. <laughs> That's nasty. Blessings here. Isn't Japan overall building heights limited due to the large number of yearly earthquakes? This is very true, and I'm glad that you brought this up. Uh, over the last, uh, over the last uh, 10 years, the technology has really changed, enabling uh, uh, designers and architects to make taller and taller buildings. The landmark tower, and I did an NHK special with Tokyo Eye inside of the Sky Tree, which is the world's largest freestanding tower. And I saw the earthquake resistance and the technology and engineering into that tower. And when you see that, you can understand that um, despite having massive earthquakes, there are, there's technologies that can counter that and make it almost as though these buildings are not even moving at all. In fact, the Skytree survived very well uh, during the 2011 earthquake. It wasn't, I think it wasn't quite finished building, but when that earthquake happened that rocked Tokyo and all of uh, Tohoku, the Skytree stood up to it pretty well because of the uh, earthquake resistance. I was, when I saw some of the pictures and the video from, from that event from inside of there, I don't know if we published that on, on Tokyo Eye, it was extraordinary to see the technology that they put in there to, to counter that. Now, Landmark Tower in Yokohama has a big ball inside there, and the ball on the roof, on the sea, on the top of the building, counters the movements of the earthquake, helping to stabilize the building. And there are other unique um, materials, carbons, things like this, that have a greater bend to it that they're using, probably in the new technology. So, historically, Tokyo has been very limited, and I'm sure they would have the tallest building in the world, if not because of the earthquakes. But because of technology, they can try to push the limits of it. And there's a lot of amazing um, uh, architectural dream plans for the city of Tokyo, including a, a three-kilometer high building, um, which is, it just makes you, makes you think big, like humans going to Mars and things like this. So that's the building, the Tokyo Abashi, Tokyo Abashi building tower, which is going to be opening next year, um, just across the street. And you can see, like once again, all right, this is Nihonbashi, and you can see the highway is above it here. But in the other picture, this, this highway wasn't there. So we want to see Nihonbashi be a, as beautiful as possible. That's Japan's bridge, all right? So I'm kind of angry about the ugly uh, highway that they put above there. And this is the, the uh, torch tower next to the new Tokyo Abashi Tower. And you can see this, this is crazy. All right, do you see this? Do you see this building? This building, and see how tall this building is. This building is this one. <laughs> this building is this one, here. This building is double the size of this one. And look up, this is hurting my neck looking up at it. I, I, have, I can't even fathom. No, that's not taller than Mount Fuji. I can't fathom how tall. I think I gotta go like this and it's still you can just up into the sky. I cannot, I, I can't contemplate how tall that uh, Torch Tower building is. It is a very, I wouldn't say fat, it has a lot of width to girth. It really has a lot of um, floor space in there. I think it was 500,000 meters of floor space or something. It's pretty crazy. Here's the highway that I was talking about. We're now walking around the construction site, the planned construction site for the Torch Tower. This highway is what goes around uh, the, the city of Tokyo and it's, it goes over Nihonbashi, which is such a shame. I do hope that they find a way to, to beautify Nihonbashi because it's, uh, again, like it, it's a really beautiful uh, bridge. It just needs to be, uh, that highway needs to go away. Here we can see some of the cranes here And Mitsubishi, uh, Mitsui Sumitomo. I guess there's a lot of groups maybe involved in it, but it's uh, Mitsui uh, Jisho Seke Inc. They're the ones that are uh, constructing this.
This is also the spot of the remains of the uh, Zenigame Bashi Bridge. Again, like a lot of these locations, as I told you historically, have ukiyo-e prints. And from this location, you would have an amazing view looking at Mount, uh, Mount Fuji, right? But if we look that way, you don't see that anymore. You just see the Shinkansen going by. So historical views like this from the 16th century are now no, no longer there. How you doing? Wow. So, oh, this is a part of the construction that looks like, and the back side of the Pasona building, uh, which looks like it's on the chopping block starting soon. Yeah. Tokiwabashi. There's a lot of construction um, that has ended uh, because they've completed it for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. This is now after the Olympics. After the Olympics, which is this time now, which was planned, a lot of construction for the re... re how do I say? Construction for the future of the city of Tokyo was, was uh, planned to start after the Olympics. That's this time now. That includes this project, the Torch Tower as well as a couple of other projects in the area. So, just because it would have gone on anyways, I don't know. It was just planned for 2021. Sean 808, thank you. I like that profile photo of Mount Fuji in there. Very nice. Are we gonna keep walking around? But above us here is the Shinkansen, so Torch Tower is going to have an amazing view, not just of Mount Fuji, but looking down from 350 meters at the Shinkansen going by is going to be pretty, dare I say, epic. I said it. Brad Fletcher, welcome to New Insider. Thank you, Brad. Image Alley. Image Alley. Help fund and only in Japan go office and torch. Oh, that would be awesome. We're $5 there. Colin for food. Looks amazing. Love the design. Meet up on the grand opening. Yes! I'll see you there. 2027. 21st century. Anjin san. Any information on who the Torch Tower architect is? That's a good question, specifically. Um, KT, love it. Get yourself a Lawson's Latte. Thank you! Marty Detmar. I'm checking out everybody who's good. Jennifer French is here and uh, Kadu. Oh, I see um, Adi Sawan joined us as a traveler. Thank you guys. Um, this again is another look back at the spot. This is behind the Pasona building. This will be completely different in 2027. 2026, 5, 4, 3. All going to be completely different. So just walking backwards here. It's so tall. And that's the building that the Torch Tower is going to be more than double the size of this building here. It's just incredible. That means it's going to be going up to like, up to here, I think. I can't. 300, 390 meters. That's so hard. I mean, you can get an idea, an image of it, because we do have Tokyo Sky Tree, which is a freestanding tower. Um, that's, what, 600 meters? Plus 643 or 634. All right, so I can get an image of it, but as a building in the center of Tokyo, Oshiage, which is the area where to Tokyo Sky Tree is, is pretty flat. There's nothing to compete for sky space, but there's a lot to compete for sky space here. A lot. This is just amazing. Michael Sasano's here. You need to find a Mr. Donuts. <laughs> I do. I haven't been in since I ate those mochi donuts uh, three months ago, which were so delicious. Was it two months ago? They put a, a slab of mochi on top like cheese and made the donut like a pizza, like a mochi pizza with jam and cream inside. It was awesome. They don't have that anymore, though. 
So this is the, the left side of the Pasona building, which looks like it's gonna be biting the dust. And you can see the tile, the tile style of it is pretty unique. As well as those windows that look like inst institutional windows from the 1950s, right? Interesting. Yeah. I'll, I'll put some pictures in our, our Discord server. We have uh, almost 10,000 members there, and this is where we go on after the live stream to discuss some of the things that we saw, as well as uh, ask questions about Japan. And it'll be a headquarters for travelers when they do come, sort of like the Lonely Planet's Thorn Trees. It's discord.gg slash only in Japan. It's free, and it's pretty awesome, and that's where I communicate a lot. It's one of the mo most efficient places to... Uh, for the community to communicate. Here's the back uh, loading docks of the old Pasona building. And parking, it looks like, for Mitsukoshi too, department store. Yeah, I'm guessing that Tokyo's population is, is still decreasing. So I'm sure that um, the city of Tokyo's population might decrease as well, especially following the pandemic. The question that I asked earlier is, do we even need the office space? And the answer is, I'm not really sure, and neither are the developers. Here's Tokyo Station. Um, this is where we started, over here by the International Post Office. We walked across here, underneath the train tracks, um, and then we just walked around the building here. This is the site of the... Uh, Torch Tower and across is Tokyo Park which is going to stay the way it is I believe and in between the two buildings is going to be a beautiful courtyard so this is the Tokyo Tower here and there's going to be a massive courtyard lots of cafes and things like that so I'm pretty excited about the planning of this Jeff Ang get something refreshing thank you I'm going to take it easy I got a new video on Omi, Omi, Omi beef and the history of Wagyu in Japan coming uh, like in the next 48 hours. I'm just putting the subtitles in on the final interview. So I'm gonna take it easy a little bit because I've been up, up pretty late. That's where we're gonna see the building. This is a pretty, pretty interesting live stream, I think. And this above us, this building is that one. This building is the building that is less than half the size of the planned tower, torch tower. It's insane. The torch tower will be double the size of this building, more than double, and it'll be right over here. So I guess they're getting rid of this building. Fascinating stuff fascinating stuff. I have some more pictures here. For, so for those who are joining us right now, um, this is what the courtyard's going to look like for the uh, torch tower between the torch tower and the Tokiwa tower. This is what the, the size of the building is. That's pretty incredible. That, this is that tower that I just showed you. That's the building that I just showed you. you I, I, right now, still, I cannot contemplate how tall that this building is going to be. And this guy is so happy. He's really... That's, is that a smile or a smirk? I don't, don't know. He can show some teeth. This is the park on the roof. See this golden area? Oh, hold on a second. See this golden area? That's going to be in a place where people, like a park on this, in the sky. And this is what the park looks like. Extraordinary. And uh, we're going to walk back towards Tokyo Station, but it's all going to be right there. 
this building is going to get, I believe this building will get knocked down. It looks like it's pretty much evacuated already. Evacuated, or should I say like, it's, it's kind of abandoned. I don't see anybody in there. And then behind it is the Pasona building, which is here. And this whole complex, this square is gonna to become the Torch Tower. And it's gonna be double the size of this building here, which is, it's just, I can't, I can't contemplate it. And this whole area, and a lot of you might've been here when you traveled to Japan, is gonna be completely different. Probably the Otemachi station and entrance will change. Everything will be different here. And it'll be a lot more, a lot more crowded too, because this isn't an area where a lot of people come. There's not a lot of things that attract you to the north side of, of uh, Tokyo Station uh, unless you have a, an office job here or something like that. Jordan, I, you're going to love the Omi Beef episode. I, I've coordinated the drone shots and the music to, to cut with the, with the cuts in the, in the pictures. So it's, it's one I think it really connects with people, the music as well as the images and the story. It, I put a lot of work into this one. So the, the bridge that it's on here, the, uh, we are becoming quite familiar with this road. This is Eitaibashi. Dori, or Eitai Dori, which goes to Eitai Bashi, the bridge that I've shown you a few times. This is a pretty important road that leads uh, all the way from where I live down to the Imperial Palace straight ahead. I like living in this area because it's I'm a five minute taxi ride from Tokyo Station, so if I need to jump on a Shinkansen to get to a job or something, I can do that. I can get a phone call that says, can you be in Osaka in three hours? Yes. I <laughs> jump in a taxi and I can get there. It's part of, it's very important to be able to do that as a YouTuber who covers the entire country. If I need to get to Tuhaneda Airport, I can jump in a taxi and it's like $30 or something. So that's, it, it pays for itself to live around here. And we found kind of an older, it's sort of an older building, so it's not too pricey. So I don't, I can't afford the new buildings here. That's ridiculous. Th that in the distance there is a north, tower the north entrance to tokyo station and where i misspoke about the olympics and the paralympics I've been, I just saw that comment there. I've been working with NHK, NHK World since 2008. So it's been over 12 years now since my first episode with them. NHK is a pretty unique uh, place to work. After they, you get paid based on the number of years since the time you started. So my salary jumps every, every couple of years. I wouldn't say jumps, it trickles up, <laughs> like trickle, but I'm a freelance freelance reporter for Tokyo I and a couple other programs, Journeys in Japan, uh, Destination Kansai. I've done a few few other ones. Um, ask, uh, teach me ninja sensei. I was the Indian ninja. Don't ask. I was the Indian ninja with yellow outfit who spoke with an American accent. <laughs> Love, I love that though. It was a pretty good series though. I think there were five episodes. Somebody's got to find that. Teach Me Ninja Sensei, I think it was called. My friend Josh, who's also a buddy of Peter Van Gomes, was the American ninja. Or was he the ninja teacher? I forget. Yeah, it's just an honor. You know what? It's always an honor to be on NHK and, and working with the professionals there. I've learned a lot on production, being behind the scenes, on stage, on set, behind the set, production meetings, working with the cameramen, the audio people, learning about the equipment that they use, how they line up the shots, how directors make uh, appointments to uh, film things like this. These are all the things that uh, I learned from working with Tokyo Eye and TV for the last 12 years. 
And before I did NHK, I was, a, I was uh, directing and co-producing a series for BS Fuji, which is Fuji TV, on learning English with a company called DHC. So I have a kind of a television background before I started YouTube. It's pretty cool to work with uh, uh, professionals because it's a little bit slower to direct, but you come up with a really different kind of a product than travel videos. Uh, UHO, UHO Finger writes in here, John, did you like the new design better or the former 2015 one for the Torch Tower? Well, they only started planning the Torch Tower in 2016, so I don't know about what you mean by the, the former. But probably the Torch Tower, I don't know. When is the demolition planned? Uh, I believe it starts in 2021, but they announced the name of the tower four days ago. And release some of the pictures and the mock-ups of it which is pretty exciting so to walk around it right now to walk around and now we're where where it would be right here i don't think i don't think we're gonna get any sunlight here because the sun oh the sun's over there so in the morning i don't think it's gonna get any sunlight there's gonna be too many shops and restaurants i mean do we really need all these shops though the the building's gonna be right there it's gonna be so massive above the north entrance of Tokyo Station. Wow. It's another building for Godzilla to demolish. It's good. Got to keep him busy when he marches from the sea. He's going to see the big torch in the sky. That's he's going to aim right for the torch. Godzilla with his laser eyes. You can already see the movies, right? With Tokyo getting taller, it's easier for Godzilla to see it out in the Pacific. He could see this stuff from Hawaii. Gojira. I'm walking back to the post office. There's a lot more people than normal because of the go-to travel campaign and people starting to move around a little bit more out of Tokyo. The infection rate in Tokyo, I gave an update just a few days ago, has been way down uh, compared to the worldwide averages. And we peaked in the second major wave. But as you can see, just about everybody has a mask on, even in this out outdoor area and when they go inside, everybody has a mask in their pocket. And the idea is if masks are like prophylactics, they keep it away from other people and keep you safe. So if everybody has one up, it really reduces the risks. And if you social distance and people are doing a, a fairly good job, people are next to family members and friends, but away from strangers. That's a good thing. There's the Imperial Palace there, the Shin Maru building and the Maru building next to each other, two towers that are somewhat similar in design. And then our final destination, and we're gonna look back at that torch tower from here. Oh, you can go up to the roof of the post office. I didn't know that. Look at that. Right, the Tokyo Wabashi project. It's actually a project over there. The first building is going to be done next year and they've been reconstructing working on that for at least two years now when they tore down that iconic building on the corner by nihonbashi that had lots of um, plants in it i remember when that building was uh, around it was it was an easy landmark to to remember so when you come to japan and this is the over overpriced should i say tokyo station hotel i think i i had a cup of I had a, a, a meeting here, a business meeting in the cafe, which was beautiful. All right. He, it was for a Yokohama FM uh, interview and the producer wanted to interview me and uh, set me up for, for the live, live show. And uh, he said, buy anything that you want. So I got a, a cup of tea, which it was a pot. It was $30. It's crazy. Thankfully, they paid. So thank you. <laughs> That's the only time I've ever been in there. I'm afraid to go back in there. I think they charge you if you just walk in. Out of appreciation for the 
history of the Tokyo Hotel. I think it was 3,600 yen. It's crazy. Oh, I'm going to do an interview tonight with um, Paul, who's a podcaster. He contacted me, um, and I thought I'd help him out. I think he's in the Las Vegas area, uh, American guy, and he says he, he's been watching the show for a while. And uh, he has a podcast called Penguin Latte, and uh, where he interviews creators. And I was uh, really humbled uh, when he asked me to talk about it. So I'll talk to him at midnight tonight for about 45 minutes. I don't know when it's going to come out, but... Um, he seems like a really nice guy, and I think it's pretty cool to help other creators out like that. Yeah. Penguin Latte. You can't forget, when you hear it, it's a kind of a neat name because you can't forget it. I just have pictures of little penguins walking around drinking lattes. That's kind of, kind of cool. All right, we're going to cross the street now. I want you to remember Tokyo Station because we're going to do one last look. And for a lot of you, a lot of you can't make it, can't make it to Tokyo um, to see, to see this, these kinds of scenes. This is what I, I kind of uh, live for. Uh, tomorrow and the next day, I believe, say the 21st, I'm going to, uh, I'm in an area where there's, there's going to be people coming. Do you see? So I'm gonna walk by people so you put the mask on to protect them. On the, tomorrow, I believe I'm going to uh, Tokorozawa, uh, is it 22nd or the 23rd, to film the LED uh, manhole covers as well as uh, a new anime hotel I've been invited to film over there. Uh, I'm gonna take you inside and take a look at this amazing hotel that just opened up. And I'm kind of curious, why Tokorozawa? Why Saitama? Is it because of One Punch Man? Is it because of the influence there? I don't know. But we're gonna figure it all out and uh, get a chance to make some really cool uh, live streams. And you'll be here with me. You can ask me questions and I'll try to pick some really uh, good times where people can watch. Um, I'll be doing more than one live stream so you can join me live at different time zones to make it convenient. All right, we're back at the st spot that we started. Oh, and this is something I want to tell you guys. Oh, this is cool. All right, I got a story to tell you. Do you see these buses, Hato bus? Everybody knows, whoa, there's a lot of people in there. I didn't expect that many people. Look, there's like tourists and stuff, domestic tourists. I'll try to wave to them for you guys. Hey. I'm waving at you. Somebody wave back. Hi. Well, I'm waving at you, little kid. That little kid waved. That little kid waved. She's looking at us. Hey, tourists. Welcome to the big city. Welcome to the big city. See you later. Yeah. So what I wanted to talk to you was about these buses. All right. There's a place called Ariake, and I took you over there just about two weeks ago to show you the BMX um, venue for the Tokyo Olympics, okay? Do you remember that? All right. The reason why I bring... My bicycle's still there, good. The reason why I bring this up is because, just checking, some guy's looking at my bicycle. I'm looking at him. The reason why I bring this up is because um, in Ariake, they, uh, the um, uh, Hato buses created a maze. So all the buses are pretty much out of commission. I guess they just started because of the long weekend that we have here in Tokyo. But they created a bus maze and they made a big square like a block of buses and you can walk around this maze like a, a maze of trees and stuff like this like you know the ones in in england where you, like mazes and stuff you get lost inside there they made it with buses and uh a buddy of mine invited me to go today but um i didn't feel like i could go because of my leg but i probably could have now i'm thinking about it yeah but hato bus did that and you need tickets and uh because they want to keep uh, smaller people, a uh, smaller amount of people going to there. A labyrinth, right. They made a bus labyrinth. It's pretty, pretty amazing, uh, actually. All right, this is the last thing I want to show you here. We're looking back now at... How do I get... Does anybody know how to get the phone to open? Open! It's not opening. 
Okay, here we go. That's the scene right here of Tokyo Station. Do you see it? Soon the view is going to completely change. So we started with this and we're ending with this. It's pretty cool, right? Just absorb that, how tall that's going to be. That's the build, that's going to be how this changes in the future. It's awesome. It's awesome that Japan, uh, Tokyo is still uh, like always creating itself. Every 10 years, Tokyo changes. And this building is going to revolutionize the landscape of Tokyo. It's going to be so much taller than anything on Shinjuku. In fact, there's a new skyscraper opening up in Shinjuku soon. And uh, there's another building. So wait. Before, you, before we write off this as the tallest building in Japan, for three years before this, this building um, is completed, for three or four years, there's a building in the Rapungi area that's going to be completed by the Mori, Bil Mori uh, Building uh, Corporation. And that's going to be about 330 meters. So that's going to be 60 meters less than this building that they're building, the, the uh, Torch Tower. That building will be completed in 2023. So for about four years, three or four years, that building will be the tallest in Japan before the Torch Tower. So I want to just point that out. But again, like this view that I come and showed you many, many times is going to completely change. Um, maybe the next time you come to Japan in 2023, you'll start to see buds of it in 2027. It'll be done. That's pretty exciting, right? Mask on. But first, the Olympics. I'm looking forward to all those live streams. Definitely subscribe. You're going to want to because the Tokyo 2020, 2021 Olympics, a lot of people can't make it, but I'm going to be here for you covering the venues and the outsides and all the events going on around here. It's going to be really exciting. So definitely don't forget to subscribe, please, to this channel and the new Only in Japan channel, um, which is uh, youtube.com slash John Daub. Very easy to remember. Uh, new episode coming on Wagyu very, very soon as well as uh, the uh, Earthquake Simulation Center, <laughs> which is probably coming next week. All right, everybody, have a good day. Have a good night, wherever you are. Definitely give me a thumbs up if you like these contents and see you in the next live stream. Bye, everybody. Gerald Augustin, so sick we had to cancel our October trip. I'm really sorry to hear that. And Thunderbeard, your fan is proof that masks do work. Fungus, USMC, United States Marine Corps, is it beer o'clock yet? We're getting there. We're getting there. King Wong, hot day, betting machine fun. How did I miss these? Thank you, Thunderbeard. I'm doing okay.